Om Ganapati Namaha Om Gam Ganapati Namaha Om Gam Ganapati Namaha Om Brahma Mirastra Paran Takare Banu Shashi Bhumi Sato Buddha Sha Guru Sha Shukra Shani Rahu Keteva Sarve Graha Shanti Kara Bhavan Tu Om Hello, greetings, and welcome to Cosmic Kev 100. This is your weekly astro video zine. This is for October 21st through the 28th, 2022. And today is Friday, the 21st of October. And so we have both a sun in sidereal Libra and a sun in um, tropical Libra. And um, we've got the moon in the constellation of Leo. And it's in a lunar mansion in the sidereal Vedic zodiac known as Purva Falguni. And so Purva Falguni is ruled by Venus. Purva Falguni's ruling deity is known as Baga. Baga is the god of wealth. Baga actually helps women have children. Purva Falguni is sometimes referred to as the entertainment stage the fireplace. It can also be a hammock or a bed, a place of rest. Um, Purva Falguni is about the regenerative aspect of Leo. Um, Baga is supposed to grant fertility to women. And it's interesting how the Venus ruled nakshatras, uh, Barani, Purva Falguni, Purva Shada, they all have some kind of feminine quality to them that implies fertility. Uh, with uh, Barani itself, it's the Yoni is one of the symbols, and in uh, Purva Falguni, it is this this hope that we are going to regenerate, and it brings fertility to women. And Apis, the ruling deity of Purva Ashada, is a water, and we associate Venus with water because of it being exalted in Pisces. And it's also about that the fluid that gives life, and it's life-giving fluid. So, in today is a Venus day with a Venus ruled nakshatra. I would say today is an auspicious day. It's a wonderful day. Good things are going to happen, and I'm so glad that you've tuned in to um, this particular broadcast here of Cosmic Kev 100 Astrology. I would love it if you would subscribe, like. Hit the bell notification button. Share it with a friend. You know, just say, "Yeah, I'm checking out this guy." So the other thing that's happening this week is we've got ourselves a new moon, and it's not any ordinary new moon because it's a new moon in um, Vedic Libra, Libra, or sidereal Libra, or in tropical Scorpio, and it's also in a significant placement on both. Um, Joe Biden's chart and Kamala Harris's chart. So in the United States, we're looking for changes. It also is in a significant place in the People's Republic of China's chart, from my own understanding. So there's probably going to be news, you know, about those two countries, I imagine, this week. Um, it's in the nakshatra of Swati, this full moon, this new moon, rather. The new moon's in Swati. Swati's ruled by Rahu, the, new moon, the, the north node of the moon. And it's a desire that has no bottom. This is probably one of the hungriest places in the zodiac, to be honest with you, because Swati is still, you know, it's in Libra, and Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio are still in the Tamas, where we're dealing with our material, solid things, things that eventually will erode and decompose, things that are really kind of dead, except for the life that we can put in them. And this is, you know, because there is no bottom. A lot of people become millionaires with this. They want to accumulate more. They don't have any um, ability to kind of regulate desire. Uh, it's Swati's ruled ruling deity is Vayu, which is a god of wind. Um, so it's a very Vata nakshatra. They they say it's a good it's a good nakshatra to avoid eating legumes because you're likely to get more gas. And if you're a vata person, you know, or have some vata vitiation, you're more likely to um, 
get gas. And, and vata is an expression in Ayurveda. It kind of refers to people that are tend to be smaller, um, especially skinny people. Sometimes tall, but tall and skinny. Um, <clears throat> smaller eyes, usually. Kind of nerds, you know, it's sort of the sign of nerds. People that are into their subject may not have a lot of physical constitution to themselves. So, um, and um, they get cold easy, you know. And, you know, where I live in Northeast California, this week is traditionally the week where the weather switches, where we go from those warm Indian summer days to that colder, rainier weather would come in. I know there's been some interesting climate changes, especially over the last 30 years, uh, are hard not to notice, you know, whether they're um, man-made or natural cycles. I, uh, you know, I, I know there's definitely a lot of agreement from peer-reviewed scientists that that human effect is is evident there. But I try to keep an open mind to everything because I also know that wherever the money is, oftentimes you get to they get to bang the, the most noise. Um, so I, I don't I don't rule out anything, weather control or other other type of things either, because it's it's just important to just keep an open mind. Anyhow we're going to go sign by sign and um, give you your horoscope. One of the things that's happening this week too, I didn't talk about yet, is um, Saturn. Saturn is going direct on Saturday at 9.07 p.m. And Saturn rules our goals, not specific daylight time. Saturn ruling our goals and ruling limits in our life and having to go back, backtracking on things. You know, Saturn gets more power. So I imagine <clears throat> with Saturn going forward, there's going to be laws passed, and they may be restricted because Saturn's in sidereal Capricorn still. So I, I, you know, hang in there, folks. You know, really just hang in there because um, these are not easy times for most any of us, except for maybe like the the billionaire ruling class, and um, they have enough of a cushion that they're not too worried about what's going to happen next. But I would say that we all have something in common, and you can't really separate yourself from the suffering of other human beings, even if you think they deserve it. You know, um, it's only by grace we have another breath. And so, with that said, I am um, going to start the forecast here, starting with you, Aries. So, um, greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. And this will be, you know, in the tropical, um, western, more commonly understood system here. But if you do get a reading from me, you will definitely get a Jyotish Vedic astrology reading because in my 40 years plus of studying astrology now, I just find that to be more relevant, more accurate, more spiritually penetrating, more heartfelt. Um, not to put down anyone who's into tropical astrology in any way because there's good readers out there, there's good people. But why I say Vedic astrology is because it's a direct path to spirit, folks. Um, and that's what the three wise men that found the baby Jesus practiced, I, from my understanding. Which is limited, for sure. And I, I love your comments, keep them coming on the, on the page. Um, so back to Aries. So we've got Mars in the third house. Mars in the third house brings courage. So you're in a courageous place right now. Sun's going to move into your eighth house. I believe that in, I believe that happens. Um, let's see, it happens early Sunday morning at 3:36 a.m. So 3:36 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Sun goes into Libra. Okay. So Sunday morning we wake up Libra. I mean we wake up Scorpio rather. It goes out of um, Libra into Scorpio. Yeah. So we're going at 3.36 a.m., Sun goes into Scorpio on the 23rd. And so that, for Aries, that's your 8th house. What is the 8th house? 8th um, house is death, birth, sex, but not necessarily in that order, other people's property, and where the power isn't within you, it's within other people. Sometimes it's within your spouse or your mate. It involves money. It sometimes involves being in debt. Um, so 
What I'd say is, you know, you kind of have to watch your spending between now and November 22nd. That's just, that's a given, okay? The um, other thing that happens this week is, is Venus moves over into Scorpio, you know, which is sidereal Libra. Um, and um, when does that happen? Venus moves into Scorpio Sunday as well, um, a little bit earlier in the morning at 12.52 a.m. So that's a double, you know, Venus and the Moon are kind of moving moving together with the Sun in this whole new Moon cycle we have. So Sun still combusts. You don't get to see, I mean, Venus is combusts with the Sun. We don't get to see Venus. But what that means is that Venus and creativity are taken into heart, you know. They're part of soul purpose. And in the eighth house, that means a beautiful tarot deck. <laughs> that means a beautiful sand painting. <clears throat> it's like the Book of Kells in the Bible, how in Ireland they illustrated the New Testament by pictures. That's, that's just how I'll put it. There's other meanings to this, but we've got to move on and get over to Taurus here, so... We can talk about Taurus right now. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. I mean, Venus moving into Scorpio is certainly good news for you. Um, and because it's your seventh house. So seventh house is a house of partnership. And if you were to get married, I mean, I'd say this Sunday would be like a wonderful day to get married for a Taurus person especially, or couples that were both Taurus sons or had a lot of planets in Taurus because... Scorpio rules the seventh house. So there's this kind of peacefulness. There's this feeling of settledness. There's this feeling of like, hey, things are going to get better. I mean, the new moon might be better, except it's an eclipse. And you see, you have to understand this, where K2, our past life karma, is in Scorpio. So, you know, the south node. And so more debt has to be paid. Now, if you were taken away from each other, say you were from a different caste or economic sphere or ethnicity and they didn't want you to intermarry back in the old days, you might have had a past life with this person and you weren't able to be with each other and now you are and there's a soul satisfaction coming together. If anything, I would say renew your relationships, Taurus. This is powerful, powerful time for that. Mm. Greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay, so your Mercury rule. And Mercury's in Libra. Um, you know, so, wow, wow, wow. Look at this, you know. Um, sun will be moving over there. Um, but, you know, Mercury in Libra... And when does Mercury go into Scorpio? Because Mercury slowed down after it was, not until the 30th or so, or the 20, 29th. So, Mercury right now is in your fifth house. Fifth house is what? Children. So if you have kids, Mercury is like kids, loves kids, loves young people, loves technology, loves wealth, loves a good joke in the fifth house, loves to educate, loves to learn, loves to travel. All of these things are, are a go. Okay, Sun, Venus moving into Scorpio. You know, Sixth House. Sixth House can be obstacles. Sixth House is uncles and aunts. Sixth House is pets, small pets. Um, sixth House can also be illness, you know, health issues. And as the weather gets cold, we're not seeing the sun as much in the Northern Hemisphere. We're not getting as much vitamin D. Now, you folks in New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, Chile, Argentina, that might be watching this broadcast, um, you know, you're going to be doing better, for sure. You're going to, you know, it's like, it's happy time, you know, really. The sun's getting exalted at this point. It's doing much better. Um, so, what I'd say, really, is how do we negotiate the pitfalls of the sixth house? If that is service to others, we help other people. We help other people because it's the answer to the opposite, the 12th house, our karma that we have to answer for. So if we're helping others, we're actually, it's like a bank account of good karma where you get incredible interest rates. <laughs> Do good without expecting anything in return immediately. Mm. All right. 
Greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, I mean, the weekend looks great. It looks like, you know, you can hang out with neighbors and friends and, um, and then get a little deeper into yourself as the week begins. Now, then we've got this new moon happening on, um, I believe that's Tuesday afternoon. And that new moon is going to be in your fifth house. Um, you know, here's the deal. Because this new moon is an eclipse, there's a shadow energy of Rahu Ketu, the north node of the moon. They can block out the light of the moon. They can block out the light of the sun. That's power. You know, it's only a partial eclipse, so things aren't going to get super blocked out. But they're going to get blocked out enough. And it's like, pay attention to your children. Pay attention to your creative works. Pay attention to where you're going with things. Now, overall, this is a happy time. Scorpio energy is a water sign. Cancer is a water sign. Everything's going to work out really great as we go through this week. There's going to be an upliftment. There's going to be a clearing. There's going to be um, greater intuition. There's going to be a greater feeling of depth and less superficiality. I think you can agree. We like that. We like that deep stuff. All right, now we go to Leo. So greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, you know, I mean, as far as this weekend goes, it looks like today and tomorrow you can make a little extra spending cash. Um, that's some good news. And so finances could improve a little bit, and who doesn't in these times with rising energy costs and rising housing costs and... Um, not as much rising in the, in the sense of wages. There's probably going to be something done about that, I suppose. Um, what we really need to do is like all get together and plant trees and eat more organic food and get rid of all these toxic chemicals and things that are hurting the earth. You know that that would be the that would be the beautiful thing. And Leo, you're known for bold moves. Um, Scorpio is about where you live. Scorpio is about your home. It's about your parents. It's about your ancestry. It's about really deep stuff. And you know, Mars is a friend with the sun, so I wouldn't say just because these signs are square to each other, it's not necessarily a dangerous thing so much. It's a lot of power, because the sun has a lot of power, Mars has a lot of power, but generally they work together. And having known, you know, sun and Scorpio in Western astrology, having I've had a lot of Leo friends, and like they say, man, I have such an admiration for you, you know, and I kind of get that in a sense in that um, whenever you have a fixed sign, there's a commitment, you know, it's not wavering. And because of that unwavering nature and because Scorpio is involved with creativity, I create its, its key phrase as well as desire, there's this incredible innovation and things that come up from the depths. And so people are like, well, who's creative at Scorpio? Oh my gosh, Joni Mitchell, um, Pablo Picasso, <laughs> um, the actress Veronica Lake, Aaron Copeland, the composer, just to name a few. Uh, Neil Young, the songwriter. Uh, there, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot more to it. Adam Ant, who was <laughs> in the new wave scene in the uh, early 80s, uh, another famous um, Scorpio creator. And there's so much, so much more in that. And so, and so you find Leo this avenue to um, promote. You know, Leo's sort of like the promoter of everything creative. And so, and the fourth has a relationship with your career house. So right now you're finding out what makes you happy. And maybe you have to sell fixed assets. And, you know, there could be some little shifts in the house because squares are not always comfortable energy. And most Leos don't like people challenging their authority, and Scorpio, because it's Mars, is that kind of person. <laughs> All right, greetings Virgo, welcome to your horoscope. So, Moon went into Virgo yesterday, Moon's in Virgo today. Um, Purple Falguni is lovely, it's ruled by Venus, and, um, you know, it's a good day for, to be a Virgo, uh, I would think, with this Virgo Moon. On, on Friday, and we're going into the weekend, and um, I'm going to go into Libra, so I see you making money, you know, I, I see you being able to make money um, starting tomorrow evening, and um, Sunday, it looks like, you know, doors are opening up for you to um, 
get a cash flow going. So that's positive. Who wouldn't like that? And uh, Mercury is in your second house. That's cash flow, too. So a lot of stuff that's locked up. Okay, so we've got this eclipse coming, you know, this week. Eclipse, new moon, new start. It's about finances. It's about your family. It's about your, um, your lower jaw, maybe your face, getting new glasses or teeth work, neck, kink in the neck, anything like that. You know, watching your throat health, th sore throat, things like that. Um, so, you know, that's part of what's going on. Um, relationship of Virgo to Scorpio, it's a friend, it's a sibling, you know. So you might be a Virgo who has a Scorpio sibling and um, that, you know, you can always fill it out in the comments later on. Or Scorpio neighbors, because the neighborhood is also the third house. It's also the library. So you might own intense books, you know, about, you know, sexuality or about Tantra or about mysteries um, and about ways of health that deal with regeneration, you know, because Scorpio is about regeneration. So you'll be filling your life with that kind of information right now as we go through the next four weeks. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, greetings, Libra, and welcome to your horoscope. Um, I say less is more. So, I mean, this is your last weekend to shine. You've got a couple more days. This weekend, you've got today and tomorrow, and by Sunday morning when you get up, the sun's going to be in your second house. Um, so, you're going to be dealing with finances as well in a lot of ways. Um, you know, and and so uh, that's gonna that's gonna be a shift for you. <clears throat> um, making money. How do we make money? How do we um, take care of ourselves and what needs to take place financially? Venus moves into the second house. Um, it's easy to want to spend on luxuries when Venus moves in your second house. So I just kind of give myself a little bit of like, hey, do I really need this? How much joy is this going to give me? Remember when you were a kid and you were like watching TV and there'd be like a new toy come out on the market and all the kids playing with the toy looked so happy and you just knew in your heart, if I get this toy I'm going to be so happy and then two days later you're like, ah, oh, I'm so, you know, three days later, a week later, you're completely tired of the toy. It's, you know, that's the way because, you know, material accumulation you have a passion for it, that's a Raja. And Rajas are always temporary, folks. You know, those passions are always temporary. They're not Sattva. Sattva is what really satisfies, you know? Sattva is like going to sleep at a good time and waking up refreshed with a good rest. Sattva is like eating the right kind of foods that aren't toxic, that aren't bad for you, aren't hurting the environment, and just waking up feeling, God, I feel so healthy and wonderful. That's Sattva. You know, Sattva is when you um, give to someone else something you no longer need, you know, and just know that it's important to you, but you don't need it and that it would bless this other person. That's Sattva. So that kind of practice. So your whole economic reality is about to get turned upside down, possibly. Um, and um, you can never outgive the Creator. You can never outgive the Divine. And so your generosity, I believe, firmly will be rewarded. Okay. Now it's getting serious. Greeting Scorpio up in your horoscopes. The Scorpio talk here. Um, you know, K2, the south node of the moon, rather, in, in Vedic astrology rules Scorpio. Um, it's no longer there. It was there in the sidereal zodiac. And unless you're born after the 16th of November, you're likely, as a Scorpio, if you're born the 15th or before, you're probably a Libra in Vedic. So, um, so I mean, but nonetheless, let's, let's talk about South Node of the Moon just being a placement of karma. It doesn't matter what your sign is, the South Node of the Moon is, is there. And so South Node of the Moon for Scorpio right now, it's like you're dealing with personal karma. And you probably, a lot of you have been since last spring. And I would love it just to say, oh, it's all joyful and happy and wonderful, but no, it's not. It's, it can be pretty ugly. It can be people stealing from you, you know, and pretending that they're doing the right thing and then not doing it, you know. That's um, super disrespectful, you know, and, and you don't like to be disrespected because you're really sensitive. 
and you hold, you rule the genitals. That's the most deep part of our health, actually. Um, a lot of people think you can flippantly change stuff in that area of your body. You cannot. This is the core of, Ar of Area Veda. And so, um, and we will find out even more of this in the next 20 years where, where I'm going with this. Because I respect everyone's choices, but I just want to say that anything, you know, that you're doing, you know, even if I've heard from women, even if it's birth control pills or anything, you know, um, it can really affect your health in some ways. And um, all this karma from the south nodes in your first house. So this is this is big stuff. And this is an eclipse. This is about you, you know. Especially if you're Scorpio moon or Scorpio rising. You're the people that are really going to be feeling it. More than Scorpio suns. <clears throat> but yeah, if that's all you know, then this is what you got. But there's a beautifulness, you know. Since most of you are sidereal Libra, Venus in your first house, a powerful Venus. Scorpio's key phrase being, I desire, I create. Venus is all about desires and creativity. We cannot escape that. And so um, I think that with this, after this new moon, even though it might be traumatic for a day or two, you're going to come up with some great creative ideas and it's going to be really helpful to you. <clears throat> Greetings Sagittarius, welcome to your horoscope. Okay. So the sun just went into your 12th house. 12th house. It's a moksha house. It's a water house. It's a distana house. It's a house of loss, folks. It's a house that symbolizes sleep. And I would say <clears throat> next to the 8th house, or right there with it, it can be a house that makes you die. You know, um, you get a lot of planets in your uh, 12th house, it can be very transformational. And we have to be careful about what we wish for. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the truth. So here's the good news. How do I negotiate these next four weeks as a Sagittarian, you know? I mean, I've got Mercury and Sagittarius and Western. I'm like, oh, wow, what should I do? Well, you make donation. You do volunteer work. You pray for others. Um, you keep a meditation practice and invoke good things, but especially, you know, making, giving something that's valuable to help others that are less fortunate and doing it to a lot of different groups, not just one. That's the most powerful. That's the best remedy I know. And, um, you know, one of my favorite mantras, well, you know, since most of you are probably Scorpio and Vedic, I give you this Mars mantra, it's very easy. It's, um, oh boy, <laughs> well, I'm going to give you a sun mantra instead, because this is the one that's coming up for me. It's, Om Karuna Rasa Sindhabe Namaha, Om Karuna Rasa Sindhabe Namaha, Om Karuna Rasa Sindhabe Namaha, so you can play this back, and it's like, May compassion flow out of my heart like a river during this time. And anything you do in the spiritual work during this period is going to be extra powerful for you. And so, you know, if you feel like you're in a lot of debt, you know, it's okay. Just consume less, fast, pray, simplify, step out, get out of your FOMO, fear of missing out, and just relax in spaciousness. That's what not doing things is. It's spaciousness. Um, greetings, Capricorn. Welcome your horoscope. Well, Saturn's direct now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, with Saturn moving direct, or moving direct this week, um, a lot of your goals that were kind of in the back burner are moving forward. I mean, the hard part is, is that Saturn makes us really take accountability of what our limitations are. We're limited. And I've said this before, even if we live to be 108, it's a relatively short life. Um, I lost a couple of friends recently that were far younger than that. And um, even though they were approaching what I would call elderhood, one was 59, one was um, 66, one was 68. Um, I 
you know, I can't help but feel a sense of loss because, you know, they could have still been with us another 15, 20 years and easily and um, more of their light would have been able to be seen by others, you know. So, you know, I, uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, it was the high holidays in, in Judaism and I, I practiced Judaism as well as practicing Jyotish, I, I practiced some Christian principles as well, I practiced Buddhism, I practiced everything that's good, even you know, the, from Islam, not acknowledging the inner jihad, you know, it's the war for your own soul. All of these things, I just take it to do good. You know, that, and that's all we can do, is whatever it is that we learn that helps us do good as people and be more responsible, that's going to bring us forward. And I think, like, for Capricorn, because Capricorn's like such a realist, you do really good with Byron Katie, who says that her version of God is reality. So, if you don't believe in God to Byron Katie, it just means you don't believe in reality. <laughs> you know, that's a funny thing to say to an atheist because they're like, I'm so real, I don't believe in God. <laughs> they're, 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 you know, and, and whatever our faith is, it's easy to get our egos wrapped up around it. I get it. I don't, you know, I mean... I don't think anyone's got a market on what the reality is about the divine, okay? And it's not to be marketed anyhow. <laughs> well, greetings Aquarius and welcome to your horoscope. I so appreciate you. You two are going to be really affected, probably even more so about Saturn going direct because, you know, over these next three months, that's it, three months Saturn in sidereal Capricorn, um, going into Aquarius sidereally on the 17th of January. And um, it's in Aquarius right now, so you're familiar with Saturn. Saturn in the first house is harder than Saturn in the 12th house. Um, <clears throat> and so you've really matured a lot. Um, all of my Aquarius friends, I just see this lovely maturity. And I think a lot of them are good at hiding what their difficulties are, what their challenges are. I was talking to one Aquarian friend, this guy is really funny, he's like, he's almost nine years older than me, and he hated it when people, if I would tell people his birthday, um, but, you know, I told him that there's like a science now where they actually could put a shot in somebody and put like um, these microscopic particles that could be activated by by computers or programs. And he's like, oh no, that's just a conspiracy theory. Well, conspiracy theory means that you're too lazy to investigate anything. That's a really quick, um, first of all, let's get down to what, what does conspiracy theory mean, Aquarius? It mean, isn't it, wasn't that a CIA term to keep people from thinking that Oswald was absolutely for sure the one who shot Kennedy. Um, nobody knows that was, that doesn't, it certainly doesn't look like that from bullet trajectory or other things that we know about, but that was a narrative. And those who go against the narrative became conspiracy theorists, you know? Um, it's safe. One thing that's nice about narratives is if you believe them, you're safe. You're in the safety zone. It feels all cozy and good. You did the right thing. You know, oh, if somebody got sick after doing the right thing, oh, that was just a coincidence. That, that's just a conspiracy theory. Well, do some deeper investigation. Look at some reports from Germany. Look at what they're reporting in Great Britain, Sweden, and other countries. Don't just go by this super corporately bank-influenced nation where there's really no difference between the two parties because they're both feeding at the same trough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't want anybody getting hurt, you know what I mean, Aquarius, but um, if we don't get to the root of things, and Saturn's about getting to the root, it's about our first chakra, it's about depression, you've suffered depression, it's about embarrassment, we've all suffered embarrassment, I've, I've been manipulated before by BS and lost, you know, a good amount of money for, for my worth, and it's humbling, but in the same time, I need to have compassion for the person that deceived me, yeah, that's where you. That's where the lightness of being comes. Is having compassion for those who actually hurt us. Doesn't mean that you have to forgive them, 
but it means that you have to have understanding. Mm. That is it. Yeah. Yeah, in Scorpio time, what does it mean for you? It's career stuff. You're working harder than ever, Aquarius. Especially with Saturn in the first house, too. I mean, it's all about hard work. <laughs> but they love what you're doing. That's awesome. Your, your people love what you're doing. Okay. Greetings, Pisces, as we wrap things, things up. Um, this weekend, today and Saturday, very romantic, very loving. Um, Moon's transiting your seventh house. Ah. Moon's going to be in your ninth house by Tuesday. Higher learning, wisdom, your relationship with your father, your relationship with your teachers, um, long distance travel, exotic studies, spiritual studies, going to an ashram, all of these things. The best spiritual you is going to come out of this eclipse. And yeah, sometimes when you listen to bad information, it's easy. It could happen to any of us. Hmm. But it's like those who, would, who say they would protect us from misinformation are the very people who lied to us. <laughs> that has to be brought to the table clearly, you know, responsibly. No matter how altruistic they disguise their intentions. Um, you know, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And what I want for you is a road to life. And right now, you're in a place where you're going to give more wealth, you're going to help more people, you're going to give more life, life more abundantly. And the best thing, Pisces, is your understanding level goes through the roof. You become a super wise person, you're able to teach things better, you're able to experience life in a full place, and your level of luck and good fortune is on the rise. Um, shall we talk a little Jupiter for a second here or two? I mean, Jupiter hasn't gone direct yet, but um, Jupiter is in Aries, which um, rules your second house of wealth. Uh, I think good things are happening for you. And I mean, in, in, even in terms of, of money and economics, there's, things are going to get better. And I don't want you to be in a place of fear. Even Saturn moving forward is going to help you to a degree. You know, I mean, Saturn for you in the Western Zodiac is in your 12th house. That's a good place for Saturn to be. So I think Pisces is doing better than ever. Okay. So this is it to kind of wrap up this whole um, horoscope. And yeah, Neptune for Pisces in the first house. Your spiritual life is still at a premium. We've got a um, Sunday, Venus goes into Scorpio. Sun goes into Scorpio. Um, Saturn is uh, moving forward Saturday evening on. Saturn goes direct, so we got one. Of, we got we got another planet out of retrograde. Whew. <laughs> and we've got the new moon in uh, Scorpio and um, with Venus and Sun all there um, together regenerating us, helping us be more creative, helping us be more forgiving, helping us be more transformational. This is Cosmic Kev with your Cosmic Kev 100 forecast. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Please share it with a friend. I love your comments. Keep them coming. You are wonderful people. And um, looking forward to being with you next week when we do it again. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Tough stuff.